Today I am going to give you a lecture on uh, finite abelian groups. So that the three cube roots of unity form an abelian group under the So that the three cube roots of unity form an abelian group under the ordinary multiplication. First of all, we find the three cube roots of unity by solving the equation. Let us consider x is equal to 1 raised to the power 1 by 3, which shows a cube root of unity. On taking q on both sides of the equation, we will get x cube is equal to 1. After simplification, x cube minus 1 gives us 0. This is a cubic polynomial. After factorizing this cubic polynomial, we get two factors. One is linear factor, that is x minus 1. The other factor is x square plus x plus 1. Here we use the algebraic formula, which is uh, a cube minus b cube is equal to a minus b a square plus a b plus b square. By using with the help of this formula, we split this cubic polynomial into two factors. One is the linear factor that is x minus 1 and the other factor is x square plus x plus 1 equal to 0. Further, this linear factor gives us x equal to 1 one of the value of x. The remaining two values of this quadratic expression we can easily determine by using a Sridharacharya rule which is ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0 is any quadratic expression. In order to find both the, both the roots of this x we use this formula x is equal to minus of b plus minus and the root b square minus 4 is the upon 2 is. So the help of this formula, where our a is 1, b is also 1, and c is also 1. Using a, b, c equal to 1, 1, here in this formula, we get two values of x, which is minus 1 by 2 plus iota root 3 by 2. This is second value of x, which we get for positive sign. For negative sign, we get another value that is minus of minus iota root 3 by 2. So from this we get three values of x. One is x equal to 1, the second one is minus half plus iota root 3 by 2 and the third one is minus 1 by 2 minus iota root 3 by 2. If we assume this particular minus half plus iota root 3 by 2 as omega. For the sake of calculus, suppose we assume this entire imaginary root as omega. On squaring this equation, Omega square gives us minus half plus iota root 3 by 2 multiplied with minus half plus iota root 3 by 2. When we predict both the factors, we get minus half minus iota root 3 by 2, which is the value of omega square and which is our third root. So in this manner, we find our all three cube roots of unity which we denote by a set G, which consists of 1 omega and omega square. These are the three cube roots of unity. When we multiply omega square with omega square, we get omega 4. And when we multiply omega with 
omega square as we know that our omega value is minus half plus iota root 3 by 2 and the value of omega square is minus 1 by 2 minus iota root 3 by 2 here again we we'll use the formula which is uh, a minus b a plus b into a minus b that is a square minus b square with the help of this formula a plus b into a minus b is equal to a square minus b square we get minus of half square minus of iota root 3 by 2 square which gives us 1 and this uh, 1 by 2 square that is 1 by 4 and 3 by 4 on any we get 1 so finally we get omega cube is equal to 1 so this is the value of omega cube this we form a composition table as follows we draw one vertical line and one horizontal line at the point of intersection we put our operation that is ordinary multiplicative operation and we arrange over all three members of G in a horizontal manner, one omega and omega square, and one omega omega square in a vertical manner. Now we determine all the entries inside the composition table with the help of ordinary multiplication because our binary here our operation is ordinary multiplication. So when we multiply one with one, we get one. One into omega gives us omega. One into omega square is omega square further omega into 1 is omega omega into omega gives us omega square and when we multiply omega with omega square it gives us omega cube and we know that omega cube is always 1 so instead of omega cube we just write 1 further omega square into 1 gives us omega square omega square into omega is omega cube again and omega square into omega square omega square when multiplied with omega square it generates omega 4 as base are same so we just simply add the powers and further we split omega cube from omega 4 into two factors and omega cube into omega and because omega cube is 1 so finally we get omega so when we multiply omega square with omega square we get just omega and from this composition table we can easily prove whether the three cube roots of unity form an abelian group or not so let us consider a property g1 that is a closer property closer property for any two members a comma b belongs to g we find a dot b is again a number of g and this is clear from the operation table so we can easily write since all the entries in the composition table are elements of And hence, G is closed under ordinary multiplication. Since all the entries in the composition table are again a member of G, so G is closed under the ordinary multiplication operation. The next property is G2 that is associative property
second G2, which is associative property. Omega with omega square equals the identity element. 
or when we multiply omega square with omega, it gives us identity element. And this shows identity element of uh, inverse of identity element is always identity element. And inverse element of omega is omega square because when we protect them omega and omega square, it gives us an identity element. So for every a element which belongs to G, there exists a 1 by A element in G, such that A dot 1 by A gives us identity element. Suppose we consider 1 belongs to G, this implies 1 inverse that is 1 by 1 and which is 1. So inverse element of identity 1 is 1. If we consider omega element belongs to G, then omega inverse be 1 upon omega, omega inverse can be written as 1 by omega. And instead of 1, we just write omega q. As we know that 1 is equal to omega q. So further after simplification is omega squared. So inverse of omega is omega squared. Now if we consider omega square belongs to G, then Omega square inverse means 1 upon omega square. Again, for 1 we write omega q as omega q is always 1. And after simplification, omega square cancels out with omega q and finally we get omega. So for omega square, we have inverse element omega. Thus, every element of G has inverse element in G. These are the four essential properties for group. Now we come to the last property which is a commutative property and which is uh, required for Abelian groups. G5. That is commutative property. Commutative property. For any two members, A B belongs to G, we must have A dot B is equal to B dot A. This property is known as commutative property and here dot stands for ordinary multiplication. And because all the members of G are complex numbers and as we know that all complex numbers always possess a commutative property for addition as well as multiplication. But in our case we have multiplicative operations. So obviously all three members of G possess this commutative property. For example, we choose 1 omega and omega square. Let us consider two elements of G, omega and omega square. Let us check whether they are commutative or not. Omega into omega square gives us omega q, which is 1. And when we multiply omega square with omega, means a dot b, and this is like b dot a. Again, omega square into omega with omega q, which is again 1. So this shows omega dot omega square is equal to omega square dot omega which shows a commutative property and this is true for any pair of element which belongs to G so G possesses all necessary five properties which we require for a commutative group like closure property, associative property, existence of identity, existence of inverse element and finally commutative property therefore the set G, which is a set of all three cube groups of unity, form a group. Hence, G of three cube groups of unity form an abelian group. I will go to the next problem that is uh, show that the set of integers one, five, seven.
7 and 11. These are the four integers forming a Bayesian group and a multiplication modulo multiplication modulo 12. So that we set up integer 1, 5, 7 and 11 form an abelian group under multiplication modulo 12. Let then G contains 4 integers according to question 1, 5, 7 and 11. Here our operation is multiplication modulo 12. This multiplication modulo 12 is slightly different from your ordinary multiplication. In this case, whenever product of two elements is greater than 12, then we divide that number with 12 and write the remainder values. And whenever the product of the two elements is less than 12, then we write the just ordinary multiplicative value, whatever we get. So, first, first of all, we construct, first of all, we construct composition table here operation is multiplication modulo 12 and our elements are 1, 5, 7 and 11 we put in a uh, row manner and again we put the same elements in a column manner 1, 5, 7 and 11 now we construct the and this is inside the composition table with the help of this particular type of multiplicative operation which is multiplication modulo 12 so 1 multiplied with 1 gives us 1 1 multiplied with 5 gives us 5 because 5 is less than 12 so we write as such whatever your ordinary product 1 multiplied with 7 gives us 7 when we multiply 1 with 11 this is 11. Now, in this second row, when we multiply 5 with 1, gives us again 5. 5 into 5, see, 5 into 5 gives us 25. And we cannot write directly 25 here because there is an operation multiplication modulo 12. And according to this operation, first we divide the quantity which is greater than 12, the number which is greater than 12 by 12. and 20, when 25 divided by 12, the quotient will be 2 and your remainder is just 1. So, whatever your remainder, you just put here instead of 25, we write the remainder only. Now, when we multiply 5 with 7, the so 5 7s are 35. Again, 35 is greater than 12. So, first we divide 35 by 12, that is 12 to the 24, and the remainder is 11 in this case. So, we write 11 as a remainder. When we multiply 5 with 11, it gives us 55. And again, 55 exceeds the modulo value that is 12. So we divide 55 by 12, 12 fourths of 48. So remainder is 7. So we write the remainder 7 here. Now, 7 1 is 7. And 7 5 the, again, 7 5 the 35. So we divide 35 by 12 and write the remainder. Now, 7 into 7. 7 into 7 gives us 49 and again 49 exceeds our 12 value so we divide with 12 12 fours of 48 so remainder is just 1 so here we write 1 now 7 11 is 77 and again 77 is greater than 12 so we divide 77 by 12 12 is 72 so remainder is 5 now 11 into 1 is 11 11 5 is again 55 and the 55 means we divide 12 by 55 so 12 for the 48 and again write 7 as a reminder 11 7 the 77 again we divide 7, 77 by 12 and we put the reminder here and 11 into 11 gives us 121 and 121 when divided by 12 because 12 times 120 so reminder is just 1 so in this manner we construct our composition table in order to prove this side become a group so first we discuss the closure property. The first property that is closure property.
close the property. For any two members, AB belongs to set G. We have A multiplication modulo 12 B is equal to his member, he is again a member of G. This we observe from the composition table. Since all the entries, since all the entries in the composition table, in the composition table are elements of G. And, and hence G is closed under multiplication modulo multiplication modulo multiplication modulo 12 it is clear from operation table that each and every member which, which is in the composition table is again a member of G and this shows G is closed Second property G2, which is associative property. For associative property, we have suppose we choose any three members of set G. Suppose A, B, C are arbitrary three elements of G. This implies A multiplication modulo 12 B. Multiplication modulo 12c is equal to A multiplication modulo 12b multiplication modulo 12c. This is true for any three members of G. A multiplication modulo 12b. First, we simplify this aggregate quantity, and on right hand side, we first simplify B multiplication modulo 12c, and finally, we get LH is equal to. RHS. And this shows the G2 associative property holds in G. And for, for example, we choose 5, 7, and 11. Suppose we choose 5, 7, 11 as a member of G. And we check whether this property holds or not. So 5 multiplication modulo 12, 7. Multiplication modulo 12, 11 is equal to 5 multiplication modulo 12, 7 multiplication modulo 12, 11. First we simplify 5 into 7, 35, and then we divide 35 by 12, the remainder is 11. So put 11 instead of this whole. And on the right hand side, 7, 11, 7 into 11 is 77, and when we divide 77 by 12, Plus 6 is 72, so the remainder is 5. Again, when we multiply 11 into 11, it gives us 121, and because this is not an ordinary multiplication, this is multiplication modulo 12, so again we divide by 12 and put the remainder which is 1. And on the right hand side, again 5 plus is 25, and 25 divided by 12 gives us remainder 1 again, and this is 2 for these 3 elements. In this manner, we can easily choose any of the three elements among the set of set mem members of the set G, and we can easily prove the associative property. Now, the next property is G3, which is existence of identity element. Existence of identity element. For any A belongs to G, there exists a one element in G such that A multiplication modulo 12, 1 gives us again A and 1 multiplication modulo 12, A again gives us A. So this shows there exists a one element which is 1 which, which is an identity element and we can easily prove 
this property by choosing a particular element like suppose 5 belongs to G. Now, this implies 5 multiplication modulo 12 into 1 gives us 5 and 1 multiplication modulo 12 5 also gives us 5. So, 1 is the arbitrary element for this set. Now come to the next G4 that is existence of inverse element. Existence of inverse element. From operation people it is clear that our identity element is 1. So we just ancestral the identity element inside the composition table and which gives us inverse elements like inverse of 1 is 1 because when we multiply 1 with 1 it gives us identity element. When we multiply 5 with 5, again it is an identity element. When we multiply 7 with 7, it gives us identity element. In a similar manner, when we multiply 11 with 11, it gives us identity element. So from the composition table, it is clear that from composition table, we observe that 1, 5, 7, 11 as inverse element 1, 5, 7, 11 respectively. Means each element of G is inverse of itself. Now the final property that is commutative property G5 Community property. For any two members, A comma B belongs to G. We have A multiplication modulo 12 B is equal to B multiplication modulo 12 A. And this is true for any two members of G. Let us consider an example like 5 and 7 are two members of G. Then, then 5 multiplication modulo 12, 7. 7 multiplication modulo 5. When we simplify this, 5 to the 35 and 35 when divided by 12 gives us the remainder 11. So, and on that side again we get 7, 5 to 35, so it gives us 11. So, your left hand side is equal to right hand side. This shows every element of G as the commutative property.
closure property, we know that for any two integers, A and B belongs to Z. This implies A dot B is again a member of Z. As we know that the product of two integers is again another integer. So A B belongs to Z implies A dot B again belongs to Z. And hence Z, Z is closed for ordinary multiplication. The second property is associative property. Associative property. For any three arbitrarily chosen three elements, ABC belongs to Z, we must have A dot B dot C is equal to A dot B dot C. This is associative property and we know that Z is a subset of uh, set of real numbers. And set of real number always possesses this associative property for additive as well as multiplicative operation. Being a subset, Z also has the same property. Next one is existence of identity elements. Existence of identity elements. Z 
But this time your operation is ordinary additive operation. And for the additive operation, uh, operation your exclusive property. For any two members, any two integers which belongs to Z, we know that sum of two integers is again another integer. So this A plus B, the sum of two integers is again another integer. So A plus B is obviously belongs to Z. So Z is closed for ordinary addition. At the same time, uh, associative property. For associative property, for any three members, anything which belongs to Z, we have A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. And this is true for any three members of Z because Z is a subset of set of real numbers and set of real numbers always will the associative property for multiplication as well as addition. So A plus B plus C is equal to A plus B plus C. The third, which is existence of existence of identity element, and we know that for an ordinary additive operation, our identity element is zero, and zero always belongs to Z. So for every A member which belongs to Z, there exists a zero in Z such that A plus zero gives us A and 0 plus k is also k. This is known as additive identity. So, now we come to the next property which is uh, inverse property, fourth one, existence of inverse element. For every A element which belongs to set of integers, there exists a negative of that element minus of A, such that A plus minus A is the identity, additive identity element, and minus of A plus A also gives us zero, the negative identity. So, for every A member which belongs to Z, there exists a minus A element in Z which is inverse of this. Like inverse element of 2 is minus 2, inverse element of 3 is minus 3, and similarly inverse element of 3 is minus 3, and 4 minus 4, 5 minus 5, and so on. And inverse element of identity is identity element itself, so inverse of 0 is 0 itself. Final property which is uh, commutative property, that is commutative property. For any two members, A B belongs to Z. According to commutative property, A plus B is equal to B plus Z, and which is true for Z because it is true for real numbers also, and Z is a subset of real number. And as we know that if we had two integers, like suppose we had two and three, so two plus three gives us five, by three plus two also produce five. So A plus B and B plus A both are identical, and hence. Z plus form an form an abelian group. 